welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. What I do know is that someone significantly are more famous than I is Jeffree Star. And this is his sixth eyeshadow palette. Now as you can see, I've had a good old play with this palette today. So if you want to find out exactly how come I've got this palette already when I wasn't meant to be getting it until my birthday in May and how well these shadows performed and what I think of them then my friend you are in exactly the right place here comes a tutorial. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, um, a bit of explanation needed because uh, I've got her. Now, originally, it's currently, what day is it? It's a very good question. It is the 30th of March, so it's the day after this released. Thank you to Beauty Bay for next day delivery. Now, originally, Hubby was getting me a uh, Coloured Rain Safari for my anniversary present, which is the 16th of April. And then for the 1st of May, he was getting me this for my birthday. That's when we thought this was releasing late April. So he'd already bought me the Safari palette ready for April. And then Jeffrey released this on the 29th, and he's like, Can't do it, babe, sorry, I had to pay the credit card. And I'm like, Oh shit. Because I know how quickly bleep, uh, blood sugar sold out. And I knew this was going to go like hotcakes. So I was kind of stressed, feeling a little bit sorry for myself, to be quite honest. Like, Oh my god, this is the first Jeffrey one I'm not going to have on the day of release. You know. Um, and then a couple of previous films that I've done one where I got sent the certified glitters and one where I got um, Viseart palette which my friend Kay sent me and she messaged me saying look I've got enough I'm going to order one for myself, do you want me to order one for you and you can just pay me when your husband gets paid and I'm like, I can't ask you to do that, this is like 48 quid plus 2 quid for next day delivery, so you're talking 50 quid, I'm like, I, I can't ask you to do that, that's, that's so not fair, I mean, the woman lives in a different country for goodness sake, so it's not like she can come and hammer on my door if anything goes wrong with, which I promise you it won't, I promise you, okay, as soon as hubby gets paid, I'm on his phone, in his PayPal and you're getting paid for this. Um, but she's like, no, I really don't mind, I trust you, would you like me to do it? And I'm like, oh my goodness, if you can, yes please, but in case Beauty Bay limit you to one per customer, please order yours first. And she's like, yep, okay, that's fine, no problem. 20 minutes later, she sent me the order confirmation for this, and I cried. I, I genuinely sat in my front room, first world problems, I know, but I just been having a tough time um, pain wise and emotional wise lately um, that's why I'm explaining this now and not when I film the intro because it'll ruin my makeup um, and the fact that she would do something so kind just Oh, just 
the one I haven't done my badge yet, isn't it? But seriously, Kay, I I don't think there are sufficient words in the English language for me to be able to thank you enough for doing this. It it Probably still have to go to Bob. Right. So today, quite clearly, um, Hubby agreed that um, I could have blue blood. I could I could basically swap the palettes around, and I could have blue blood for the anniversary and um, safari for my birthday, and that I could have blue blood early as soon as it arrived, rather than having to wait. Um, so Kay, thank you, Hubby, thank you. Um, Let's get this opened up so I can show you. I have already opened it um, and I have done swatches. This box feels smooth and uh, it's got like a matte coating to it. If it's, it, it kind of, I want to sit and stroke it, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, this printing is, is embossed so it's raised. Um, and this is inset with blue foil and that goes all the way around the box. On the back you have the ingredients for every single colour, thank you Geoffrey, um, and at the bottom it says untouchable blue Monday and ocean ice are not intended for use around the immediate eye area. Now all that means is it could stain. Um, Although, to be honest, Untouchable is such a beautiful peach, I don't quite know how that's going to stain. Um, and Ocean Ice feels like a press glitter, and behaves like a press glitter, and looks like a press glitter, so I'm guessing that's why. Uh, could cause some irritation, or it could cause staining, so just, you know, be sensible. So. How beautiful is that? Let's tip her out of her box. Yes, I keep all the boxes. I'm funny like that. This is the kind of... It's almost like a jewellery box. I know some people have likened it to a coffin, but to me it's, it's far more like an elegant jewellery box that you would see sitting on somebody's table. Um, fabulous cornflower blue matches my kitchen beautifully. Thank you for that, Geoffrey. Uh, and a lovely blue chrome uh, catch, similar to the one on uh, Blood Sugar, but of course there were two on that one. As with Blood Sugar, initially this is quite tight to pull open, but that's good because you know it's not going to fall open if you're not the sort of person that keeps the box, if you're travelling with it, and it does keep it nice and airtight. And I've found with Blood Sugar this, this does loosen up a little bit the more you use it. So. <clears throat> Gorgeous mirror, as you can see. I'm going to turn this upside down just so I don't blind you. And there are the colours. Right, now, uh, that's untouchable. That's Blue Monday. And that's Ocean Ice. So it's those three that are either a pressed pigment or a pressed glitter. Now, they've all got stars in, apart from this shimmery white which has got a diamond with a Cullinan written on it. Now I actually know someone with a surname Cullinan but uh, Cullinan is actually a diamond hence the diamond on it. Uh, this has a pair of lips on it and is priceless. Blue Monday has a cloud with a lightning strike coming out of it. Blue Blood has a crown. Wealthy has a bag of coins. And Undertaker has a coffin with a star on it. Everything else has the usual Jeffree star with the, the logos on. Right. I have swatched these going... Now let's try and take the mirror up above. No, because that hurts. Okay. Right, I have swatched these going top row and half of the middle row on the top of my arm. And the second half of the middle row, the bottom row on the bottom half of my arm. 
I will put those up on screen and talk you through the colours. Now, um, <clears throat> Wealthy is pretty much my skin tone, so that probably won't show up. Um, and Mint Tea, Iron Cold, Untouchable and Priceless are also quite um, pale shades. So I'm guessing they're going to need a bit of working with on the eye to build up. Uh, but again, they're also very similar to my skin tone. So, uh, once I've finished talking you through, I am going to be very up close and personal, so please don't, don't jump and scream, okay? Right, swatches. So on the top row, going left to right, or from my wrist to my elbow, we have got... Kulinan, which has the diamond in it, Mint Tea, Crystal Flesh, I'm Cold, Untouchable, which is one of the pressed pigments, Priceless, Power, Blue Blood and Deceased. And then on the bottom row we have Ice Tray, Blue Monday, which again is another one of the pressed pigments, Flourishing, love that colour. Wealthy, celebrity skin, entitled, ocean ice, which is the pressed glitter, cremated, and undertaker. Hello, I'm back. Right, uh, a little bit of quick housekeeping because I'm aware that I have blethered and cried and blethered quite a bit already this morning. Um, my face is washed. Moisturise, SPF and primed and I have used my usual antiperspirant primer details of which I listed in the description box. Uh, on my eyes, which I just need to go over because having cried I've made it a little bit damp. Um, I've actually used, believe it or not, Tarte Shape Tape because um, I have one that I need to use up and Tarte are in consideration of coming off of my shit list, uh, I am watching them closely. Uh, and I have not set this base. The shade of shape tape I used was 8B Porcelain Beige. Right, I'm expecting fallout from this because blues are one of the most difficult colours to create. Uh, I'm going to start off with this Morphe M321, which when it arrived was busted. So, thankfully Morphe were very good and they've sent me a non-broken replacement. There we go, see? Um, and I've just kind of uh, gorilla taped around the break. So, I can use this one because I do like this shape brush. So, um, I blend quite slowly because I have chronic pain and because I'm aiming this at all skill levels from beginners to experts, I talk you through each stage, I talk you through each step and I do both eyes on camera, I don't speed anything up, I don't cut anything out in terms of doing the eye look. The only things I tend to do off camera are eyeliner, and I have a separate tutorial on that, a, a short mini tutorial. Um, mascara, because you want to have to apply mascara, lipstick, etc, etc. And if I'm doing an eye look, I'll normally do my foundation and everything off camera as well to try and shorten the film down a bit, otherwise you'd be watching a feature length film. Uh, if you find I'm going too slowly for you, by all means, speed me up. There's a speed widget, feel free to use it. Now. I've got deep set eyes which can often be mistaken for uh, hooded eyes. So I mean, if I cover up my mobile lid here and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again here that folds back in. Um, so I do experience some of the issues that people with hooded eyes have. Um, I get transference of shimmers up onto the upper lid. Uh, I struggle even when I'm using glitter glues to get glitter to not crumble off of my eyes uh, and cutting the crease is not as easy and straightforward as it is for most people. 
Now, to determine whether you have a hooded lid, look straight forward with your eyes open. Now I can see all of my mobile lid from the inner corner all the way across to the outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids, I have deep set eyes. If your upper lid covers part or all of your lower lid, or your mobile lid, you have either a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorial. All you need to do is grab something like this, and with your eye open, mark where you need your crease to fall. And in fact today, I'm going to be doing something very similar to that anyway, because I want to create a sweep effect. So, uh, if you don't see your mobile lid, all you need to do is create your sweep effect three or four miles higher up than I am. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between your crease and your brow, so just use slightly more tapered or smaller blending brushes. I can't wait any longer, I need to put some of this on my face. Uh, I am going to start off with Blue Monday, which is one of those pressed pigments. And I'm just picking it up on this brush and I'm going to mark where I want because I want to still be able to see the blue when my eye, this blue when my eyes are open so I'm just carefully marking a line it's going on my lid but I'm not worried because I'm going to cut the crease later anyway and then from here I want to try and have that effect. Fun thing, we'll be making this match over this side. Now this is the eye that I'm blind in and where it got pulled around a lot when I was at the ophthalmic as a child. I've got very deep creasing here so I do struggle um, and sometimes have to pull my lid out straight to make sure I've not you know, that I've not got any white areas left. Um, and as you can see, this lid moves around a lot more than this one does. So, don't pull your lids around, folks, unless you absolutely blooming well have to. They look about even? I think they do. Blimey, that's got to be a first for me. Right, just going to clean that brush off on a clean washcloth. <clears throat> and I'm picking up my slightly battered but mended M321 from Morphe. And I'm just tapping that into... Blue Monday. There's a reasonable amount of kick up in the pan, so I'm just tapping back off. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. That's a, a reasonable amount of. That doesn't worry me though, because at least you, you know you're picking pigment up on the brush and you can pick up the loose um, pigment when you do the next bit. So, what I'm going to do, following this line, I'm very carefully very gently just going to pat this colour on following the line that I had created because obviously this isn't on a non set base so it's on a sticky base and this is one of the pressed pigments so you may get some staining from this if you do have sensitive skin um, I would advise just trying the pressed pigments out somewhere else on your arm or uh, in a corner of your elbow is always good actually because it's quite 
um, sensitive skin just there and that will allow you to determine whether you're going to have a reaction to it. I'm going to bring that right down. into the inner corner here as you can see I'm literally just pressing and dragging at the moment rather than doing any actual blending right I'm just going to very gently do a little tiny bit you can see I've got a lot of creasing here, which uh, very often means that the shadow can go patchy just there, so I do have to be very, very careful. But I'm just doing very, very tiny circular movements, just to blend all that blue together. Make sure we haven't got any patchiness anywhere. And to slightly soften that top edge a little bit and if you find anywhere when you blend it you lose a bit of the colour just pick up a bit more pigment pat it back on and then rebuff hmm. As you can tell, I'm going to be going for quite a dramatic look today. Now this eye I can actually close my eye to show you, which might make it a little bit easier to see the process. So I'm just tapping this on, following that line that I've made. Lifting my eyebrows up to stretch my skin out as much as possible. And you can see there I'm having trouble with this creasing, but I'll show you how I deal with that in just a minute. I'm just going to gently drag this bit rather than, although it's not set, I'm just going to drag it down this bit here. Because with that creasing I am going to have to deal with it in a slightly different way. But for the rest of the eyelid... I'm going to treat it exactly as I did with my right eye and just pick up the pigment oh, no, I didn't quite go up to my brow and pat it into place and then very, very softly and very, very gently just start tiny little circular movements all the way along to ensure we've not got any patches anywhere and to slightly soften this top, ed top edge here as I said, I'm really not worried about getting it on my lid at all I'm just going to, can you see what I mean about the issues that I get with these deep creases here? So I'm just going to pat this pigment into place and blend it as quickly as I can so that I'm stretching the lid out for as little time as possible. building that pigment up a bit. There we go. Always sit back and, and look at it and make sure it looks the same on both eyes because um, my eyes are not symmetrical, very few people's are. Um, and you may find you have to do a slightly different shape on one eye to make it look the same. Or you could do a James Charles and just photoshop it and flip it over. That annoys me when people... I hate when people use any kind of photoshop and face tuning. 
Right, so I've cleaned the pigment off of this brush and I'm going to go into flourishing which is that beautiful teal bluey green and I'm going to pat this slightly overlapping with the blue that we've already put down. I'm going to pat and then gently buff. Pat and then gently buff. Just to try and blend these two together very beautifully. This really is a stunning colour. I'm going much higher towards my brow than I normally do, but this is a more editorial look that I'm doing. Although, to be honest, I'm going to wear this when I go to mother-in-law's later. She's probably going to look at me like I've gone nuts, but... Uh, actually, no, she probably won't. She's used to seeing me turn up in all kinds of makeup, to be honest. Turned up once looking like a zombie with bits of flesh hanging off my face. That was an interesting night. Hasten to add it was Halloween. Okay, so this is building up nicely and blending well and blending nicely in with because obviously this is a this one is an actual eyeshadow rather than a pressed pigment. So the two different types of shadow are blending quite nicely together. So now I'm going to do uh, the same thing. over on this side. So slightly overlapping, pat and buff. I really do like this. You're probably going to see quite a few looks done with this, to be quite honest. Uh, I'm going to be looking for reasons to use this palette because it is a stunner. Now as you can see, this side I need to put considerably more green on or flourishing or teal or whatever colour you want to call it so that it actually matches the look of this eye because this brow is obviously higher. So I'm just going to Pop that on and commence buffing. Again, these are blending together really nicely. I am popping a little bit of flourishing onto the brush each time because the pressed pigment, the blue, yeah, Blue Monday, because it's a pressed pigment, it has more pigment molecules. So in order for them to blend efficiently, I needed to add a little bit of flourishing to the brush. I think I came a bit further in this side, didn't I, on that side, so I need to even it up. I came to the, yeah, I just came to the top of the arch. This is why you should always keep sitting back and checking that you've got even looks both sides. This really is a lovely palette to work with so far. I know, I've used two shades, shut up Ange, but uh, this definitely feels like the same formula as uh, Blood Sugar. Which is awesome. I think Blood Sugar is by far his best formula. Right, I'm going to clean the brush again on my clean washcloth. And 
and then trying to decide which shade to go in with next. Tempted to go in with deceased, which is actually a satin. But if you if you buff a satin with a brush like this, it'll end up buffing most of the shine out. But um, no, I think I might go in with blue blood, which is pretty much almost the same colour as my walls in the kitchen. So I'm just making sure I've got all of the colour off of this brush. Yep. And I'm going to pick up some blue blood. This one has a crown on it, which is lovely. And quite a lot of kick up on this pan. And I'm going to pat this. Oh yeah, that was a good choice. So I'm going to do the same here, pat and blend. I'm just going to flip it over to the side that I've not got any. On just to help with the buffing and the blending. Come back round and pop a wee bit more of pigment down the side here. This is such a beautiful palette. I'm loving this so much already. And there's a lot less fallout than I was expecting so far, to be quite honest. I was really expecting much, much more fallout than I have at the moment. Right, this blue blood is beautiful. Obviously it's the eponymously named shadow. Oh, for those of you who English is not your first language, uh, eponymously means it's named after the shade, the um, palette. So the palette is blue blood and this shade is blue blood. I do have to remember I don't always have native English speakers watching me. I'm just buffing those colours together here. Again, picking up a little bit more of blue blood just to help blend it into Blue Monday. Because Blue Monday, being the pressed pigment, does have more pigment molecules, and I do want that nice softened line there, like that. Ooh, I like that. Right. I'm just going to clean this brush off. I'm probably going to use that again later. Not for a minute. Let's get you nice and clean. Now, I have got a Q-tip or a cotton bud, depending on where you're from, and some micellar water. And I'm going to use that to clean up The mobile lid. And just neaten up. The inner corner, oops, sorry, I've got my screen there. The inner corner. Use the other end just to dry it off a little bit. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm now going to do the same thing with this eye. Probably going to have to hold this one tight. Because of the creasing. Right, next stage, I am going to grab my shape tape Tidy your brushes and then can't find the one you want. <laughs> right, this is um, an acrylic nail art brush. This is number 12, which I assume means 12 mils wide. I just like it because you can get really good accuracy with it. So, what I'm going to do is pick up some concealer on this brush. And I might actually use a little mirror here so I can see what I'm doing nicely. I am going to cut this crease following the line that we had originally laid down. Now it's worthwhile taking your time doing this and getting it accurate. Obviously the bottom half you can be a little bit more relaxed with, but you know, take care when you're doing that line to get it as accurate as you can. I'm going to take it slightly further off because I can always use my cellar water to straighten it back out again. I haven't decided yet what I'm doing in terms of liner, so I'm just going to pat over the whole area using the brush just to make sure we have an even coat all over the lid. And then I'm going to flip it over to the side that hasn't had concealer on and just gently pat that all over the area too. 
because this will then pick up any excess concealer like so. Now I like to do one at a time because I want this to stay quite um, quite wet so that it stays sticky. Right, I'm grabbing a tiny little brush like so. It's actually stained from a previous shadow I had used. I know it's clean because I washed it last night. Right, let's go back into Blue Blood and decide which shimmers I want to use. Um, reversing the colours that I've used on the top. Normally I would go lighter to darker. I might try something a little bit different. I'm going to go into Entitled on the bottom row. And I'm going to use these shadows dry. So this you can see is close in terms of colour to flourishing. I'm just going to press this into or onto that concealer. Shimmers are very very softly packed so do be careful with them. Obviously applying these dry, I am getting fallout, but that really doesn't worry me because I haven't done my foundation or anything yet, so it doesn't matter how mucky my face gets, at the moment anyway. Just sort of smoothing across what I've popped on the lid so far, just to get rid of any um, loose pigment that hasn't actually stuck to the concealer yet. And I want to take it to about the same point, about here. Where we blended the top two shadows together. Do I want that at a slight angle? Do I? Mm, I think I'll leave it as it is to be honest. Just smoothing that over like so. Pretty. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off. Again, very, very softly packed, so do be careful with them. And even though these are applying dry, they have definitely got 
oomph. Obviously I'm being very, very careful when I'm at the top here just to make sure I don't go over onto the matte shadow. This really is a joy to use. These shimmers are going on really nicely. No problems at all here getting these to stick to the concealer because I haven't got any glitter glue on. You've, well, you saw that I didn't put any glitter glue on. This is literally just dry pigment onto slightly sticky concealer. Now just to blend that there, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put ice tray on one side and some of the entitled on the other. And then I'm going to drag some of the entitled across onto ice tray. And then drag some of ice tray back over onto entitled. You can see my lid moves a lot. And I'm just going to repeat that a couple of times. Pick up a little bit more of entitled. And then really gently buff over right where the two meet. Mm. I'm liking this so far folks. Hope you're enjoying it. So this is what I do when I get a new palette. I just I open it up and I see which colours call me. Unless I've got a specific um, colour scheme that I'm following, or uh, an inspiration picture that I'm recreating. Normally, I just do whatever my gut tells me when I open the palette. But I've got a little bit too much concealer on now. I need to look, take some off to get some accuracy down to this corner. So again, just repeating exactly the same procedure over on this eye. Making sure that definitely picked up a little bit too much concealer on the brush that time. Let's just clean some of this off of the brush. So I've got a little bit more control. Okay, it's better. 
So again, just lightly patting over the whole area. Oops. Okay, I'm going to have to tidy that line up. Is what I mean about how accurate you can be with these brushes. It's one of the reasons I really love using them for eye work. So there again, just lightly pressing all over get rid of any excess concealer and again it doesn't worry me that we've gone way past the end of the eye because I'm going to be neatening that up anyway This is so much fun. I do love playing with shadow. Having a quick slurp. This is my skull mug with uh, ice latte. Homemade cold brew ice latte. And that's a silicone straw. In case you were wondering. So let's open this palette up. And again, go into Entitled to start with. And again, because of the deep creasing on this eye, I am going to have... really hope the neighbour's screaming is not being picked up on camera. So like I said, because of the deep creasing, I am going to have to pull the eye out when I press this on. Otherwise, what happens is it sort of skims over the deep creasing and then through the day every time you move your eye you get little showers of shimmer coming down which is great if you want to gently build up shimmery freckles throughout the day uh, but if that's not your intent not always very helpful. So, pressing that onto the tacky base and then very gently just brushing over to get rid of any loose pigment. Again, that doesn't worry me. Right, clean the brush off. This is so much fun. Uh, and then I'm going to go into Ice Tray. And repeat the procedure over this side. And I know this, this looks like it's a complicated thing to do, but I promise you it really isn't. You just need patience and just, just follow each step, basically. Because I can assure you, I am far from an expert. But I do hope that at least when I'm showing you these techniques, I'm going through them slowly enough and explaining each step carefully enough that you feel confident you could do this.
and yes if you have crinkly eyelids it is going to show some of the texture up but that just can't be helped but do you know what I've earned every single one of those creases and I'm proud of them because each one's a memory so again I'm going to put entitled on one side of the brush ice tray on the other and I'm going to drag a bit of entitled across of ice tray and a little bit of ice tray across entitled and then again drag entitled back across and then use the very tips of the bristles just to really gently blend that overlap Right, just gonna tidy the edges up with a Marcella wipe. Well, Marcella water on a cotton pad, anyway. I want to carry on playing right I am going to get a very fine liner brush Got a new one here to try. This is one of the um, Beauty Bay brushes that they do, and this is the All in the Deeps. From their rose gold range. Just gonna clean up. Put that bit there just because it's bugging me. Now, going back in with my tart, I'm just going to pop some onto this liner brush and I'm going to do a negative wing, which I will do on camera so you can see how I do it. Now, Although I say I don't cut anything out, what I'll do, I'll show you how I do this wing with the concealer, then I'll pause you and I'll do the other wing and if I put a colour over the top I'll tell you what I used. Um, because I do have a separate tutorial on how to do a winged liner. So it would make far more sense for you to watch that and it would also mean that I can then reduce the length of this film a little bit. But I will show you exactly how I do it. With this brush on this side. So I'm going to make it quite a, quite a big wing, I'll take it about halfway up the shimmer. And you can see I've gone in 
really tight there and then made it slightly thicker till I get to about the outside edge of the iris. And then just going to follow the exact same shape as we did here. join the wing together. Again I'm coming right off the edge of it because I can tidy the edge up again with the micellar water on the cotton pad again. So in exactly the same way that you would do if you were using a black liquid liner you're just going to really carefully go along and fill in with concealer. Take your time doing this. and you will get there. It really is just practice and patience. Now I've done wing liners since probably 1987. <laughs> so, you know, I've, I've been doing it quite a while. So again, I'm just going to pull it right off the edge of the eye look and very gently go along so that I'm removing any clumps or thicker areas. Okay, so there's how you do a negative liner. Now when you relax your eye, if you decide that, as I just have, that looks a little bit too square just there, then just round it off a little. As I said, because this film is going to be getting really long, I'm going to pause you and I'm going to do this over this side. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Um, because the concealer had mixed in with these blue shimmers and turned a bit blue, um, I actually grabbed my um, Colourpop 00 concealer, which is the pure white and I actually went over it with that so that when that mixed in with the blue it's kind of given um, a much more paler blue uh, which I preferred and I also took the opportunity to put my face on as in mascara not mascara for goodness sake woman foundation bronzer blush brows <sighs> I'm so damn excited by this, I can't even speak. Right, time to finish off under here. Um, um, do I use different colours or do I can... No, I think I'm going to 
mirror what I've got up here. So I'm going to pick up some flourishing on this brush, like you can see because it's stained already. Awesome. And I'm just going to run this just tight up under my lower lashes, going probably about two thirds of the way along I'd say, because I like to leave this inner corner here because I continue my inner corner highlight round. I just find on my eye shape that's the most flattering. Now time to attempt to do it on this eye as well. Or I'm blind in this eye. I obviously don't have any peripheral vision. So I'm kind of relying on muscle memory and my viewfinder, which is way too far away when I haven't got glasses or contact lenses on. Uh, for me to not poke myself in the eye and it's not always effective, shall we say. But let's pop this under hull like so. Please ignore the flinching. That's about even, doesn't it? Way. Now, this is a brush that I got from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. But I love it because it's flat top, but it's really chunky, so it's great for blending out under here. Um, I'm going to go in, I think, with I'm Cold, which I've not used yet, but it's a little bit lighter than Blue Blood. I'm just going to buff that underneath the lower lash line here to soften it and continue with the beautiful turquoisey bluey theme going on down here because obviously the cornflower blue which is what I'm putting on now mixes with the teal and gives this gorgeous sort of Caribbean um, turquoisey colour which I think is really quite pretty and actually quite reminiscent of breakfast at Tiffany's so which I do have but it makes my teeth look yellow so I tend not to wear it I haven't bought the lip vault because there are only two shades in there that I don't already have and that's the two new ones and to be honest, one of them's just a lighter version of Diamond. And the other one is just a version of You're Still on the Property but with glitter in it. So, unless that comes down in price, I'm probably not going to pick that up. Because where I've got more adventurous with my eye makeup now, I don't always wear such wacky lip colours. I do like that. I like that a lot. Right. Continuing with the uh, Jeffrey theme, Platinum Ice Palette. I was debating between this and using. Um, Glacier, which is this icy blue white, or getting my sleek Midas Touch palette and using rhinestone, which is slightly more blue but I think because I've got so much colour going on I think I'm going to use uh, Glacier from Platinum Ice so this is just a really cheap flat top brush that I got from eBay years ago so I'm going to go into Glacier. 
This is one of those ones that does tend to get hard pan, which is really annoying. So I'm just going to pop this around the tear duct. Wow, that's so beautifully bright though, isn't it? And then along under the front part of my lower lash. And then repeating it this side. I think this really picks up on that sort of pale bluey white liner that I've done and I'm going to pop a little bit of this just up under the tail end of my brow filling in that last little bit at the top there mm, I like that right I'm now going to go off camera and do my um, mascara, stick some more of this highlight everywhere and bung a lippy on, do something with my hair and I will be back for my final thoughts. Well, first impression final thoughts anyway. See you instantly. And I'm back. I decided to use diamond on my lips because it's this gorgeous bluey lilac which I think complements the eyes beautifully. Um, I used my Slay All Day Watermelon Spray, Setting Spray, tied for that in the description box, I do earn commission from it. Um, what did I use on my face? Butter Bronzer in Bronzer, L'Oreal Peach Blush. Uh, you know what highlight I used, maybe mascara is Catrice Glamondol Volume Mascara Waterproof, which is an absolute dupe for Bad Girl Bang. So, this is my first impressions and first makeup look using the A Blue Blood palette. So, what do I think so far? I'm really enjoying using this. I know I've only used what one, two, three, four, five, six different shades so far. So I've used basically a third of the palette. This th there are just so many looks in here that I want to create. Um, this was the one that called me today. I hope you like it. I am going to do more looks with this. If there is a specific shade, I'm going to put this up close to the camera again so you can see all of the all of the names and everything. Right. Now, if there is a specific shade you want to see me use out of here that I haven't already used today, do put a comment in the comments box below and I will try and use all of the requests in the next look that I do with this palette. So far um, from the shadows I've used it does feel exactly the same formula as the Blood Sugar palette which is by far his best formula in my opinion. Uh, blues are one of the most difficult colours to create and um, I've used a mixture of pressed pigments, eyeshadows, mattes and shimmers and you know every single one of them has paid off with colour. They've been true to pan. Um, they've actually performed better in some cases on the eye than they did in the swatch which just goes to show you can't always go by swatches. 
Um, do I recommend this? Well, at the moment it's sold out everywhere, so if you haven't already got it, get your name on a waiting list. Um, but yeah, so far I absolutely love, 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 love this. Um, obviously, if there are any issues with the palette, with shades that mm, do turn out to be a bit iffy, I will of course let you know in a forthcoming film. But for now, here you go. This is my initial look. This is where I'm supposed to do all these silly little poses, isn't it? Oh, I'm not one of those sort of people, as you know. This is my initial look with the Jeffree Star Blue Blood palette. I really hope you like it. I really hope you enjoyed this film. Um, yeah. Double check you're still subscribed because YouTube does keep unsubscribing people. So, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.